Hi friends and welcome back to Max Electronics. Uh, in today's video we will be fixing this FEC uh, POS system. It is a very small POS system. It's got um, receipt printer here. It's got fingerprint scanner and a card reader with a touch screen which is adjustable so that can be adjusted up. It's pretty stiff. It's got uh, Windows XP embedded um, system. So I've started taking the screws out of it and I thought, huh, I better make a video about it. So I haven't opened it up yet, just taken quite a, a lot of screws out, but not all of them yet. So let's continue with uh, opening it up together. So uh, the only thing I did take off was the fingerprint scanner and the, the card reader and the card drive. Well, I disconnected, but I haven't opened the lead. So there's the one screw that's holding the standard... Um, SATA drive-in, there it is, I don't know the size yet, so that's the insides, that's the RAM and uh, CF card slot, it looks a bit smaller than usual but I'm sure it will fit normal CF card, let's see, yeah, so it'll fit normal CF card if we want to, and now it won't get out, great, usually they have a jack button but obviously not this one, all right I'll leave it in for now, Let's remove that finger. Oh, I'll show you the back of it first. So we've got the draw out, we've got the Ethernet, two COM ports, a VGA out, four USBs, and a power plug. This thing is power hungry. I don't have a power supply, yes, power button here. Yet uh, the power supply is 12 volts, 12 and a half amps, says it right here. So let's continue on with opening it up. I believe um, next thing we'll remove the fingerprint scanner and the card reader, which is a standard edition for any POS that comes as a module. It simply screws in and there's a plug. It's the Molex, uh, how many pins? Nine pins? Eight pin. 8-pin Molex and the USB and COM, I believe, in one. Feels a bit loose, so that needs to be cleaned. That fingerprint scanner is dirty and sticky. So we'll put that aside. Some models don't come with it, so that's what it looks like at the back. Some models will have just a cover here. What's next? Uh, the receipt printer comes out next. So we'll open that. I did unscrew the screws, like I said before. And that comes out next, I think. There we go. So again, it's connected with a couple of cables, which uh, I believe COM port and power. The receipt print is very simple. It does have its own cutter. Uh, that goes to the head and we'll have to refurb it as well. It is quite dirty inside. This is just the rollers. Luckily nothing is broken. Oh, that's the cutter one. You can see the cutters coming out. So that's the cutter mechanism and this one must be the roller. Yeah. Now let's take, we've got, you can see two speakers here. Stereo. Now let's lift that off and take the lead off finally. Did I remove all the screws? I'm not sure about this one. If I've Oh, I did too. Okay. And here is the circ... Oh! That is nasty. Look at those caps. They are pretty much, you can see inside of them. They're not just bulging. Almost all of them now that I'm looking at it. Uh, let's see if I can take the screen off. or get this board out somehow. Let me just... Um, figure out where all the screws are and remove the main board out of the unit and then we can have a look at the circuit board. I've pulled it apart and oh my god. So we'll start with the screen section. This is the back of the screen. You can see the LVDS cable here. We've got also the um, backlight driver right here with two lamps and I'm thinking maybe if it works I can um, replace them with the LED one because I've got the LED driver and um, LED strips which would be a lot more efficient and those are probably burned out it's a 15 year old unit 
Well, it's still working. That's the side connector for the fingerprint reader and the card reader, which is a USB and a keyboard. That's why there's so many pins. It's a standard for POS systems. We've got the COM port um, touchscreen driver here and the cable usually goes on the side over there, which is that cable here, I've disconnected it. Because the touchscreen is usually attached to the screen itself, the glass, the digitizer. But in this case, it is actually attached to the front panel right here. So that's the screen itself. It looks in a pretty good shape. Uh, we still don't know, maybe it's got all sorts of stuff, but I think I've got replacement screens like that. I'll have to check. So that's it, and there's the two speakers here. There, I'll leave that for now. And let's move on to the next uh, part, which is, um, well, digitize. I'll remove it from here just so I can clean all that. So there's nothing interesting here, just a few screws. It's a four wire one, yeah. All right, that goes to the side. And let's have a look at the main board and it is in horrible condition. It's almost not worth doing it, but I will try to restore it and see if I will succeed. So what do we have here? We've got corrosion, corrosion, corrosion. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So almost all of the caps are bad. And by almost, I mean they probably all need to go. There is no tantalum caps on here at all. They're all electrolytic and they luckily, even though they're so bad that there's a uh, black stuff coming out of the top, uh, luckily they did not leak anything on the board, but let's have a look. I don't know if you can see it on the angle, but clearly all the big caps, this is bad. And all those, this, 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 everything that's got a vent uh, cut on it is bloated. Some of them are so bad, like this one, that it's actually open, and this one you can see inside of it. You see that black stuff? It's not actually stuff, it's the uh, void. This stuff is, yeah, that's a black electroly electrolyte that's leaked from it, but those ones, that's all void. You can see inside of them. So all of them, except those little ones, uh, they don't have a vent, so they're probably bad as well, so I'll have to replace all of those caps. I wonder if it's uh, for nothing or if it'll work. So this is the power for the SATA cable. What else do we have here? Those jumpers here, you may be wondering what they are. They are actually setting the COM port pin 9, whether to be 5 volt or 12. It could be also a ring or um, 5 volts, this selection. So that's them. There's a few selectors here which would be again those are for COM ports, whether they ring or off or whatever the pin is. There is one, I think it's this one, uh, that would be selecting LVDS panel voltage because those are universal boards, they go into many tiles with different size screens and brands, so they're fully configurable. Those side ones, they actually just grounding pins, all of them are common to the chassis. What else do we have? Fan that is not used, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, the RAM on it is um, 1 gig. I know that because um, it um, says it in the manual that it comes with 1 gig and maximum. It doesn't say here. It doesn't say the size of it. No, but I know it's a 1 gig RAM. So we'll put that aside. And that's it. I'm going to go um, out of, I can notice there's a 1000 microfarad um, 6.3 volt caps that I don't have. So I will have to go shopping for them. Usually I buy them online, but since I'm making the video, I might as well just go to a local hardware store and buy them. They are a bit more expensive. They're like two bucks each compared to online, but uh, that's the deal. So. I'm off to the store and we will be back with recapping it all. I've removed all the bad caps from the main board. Here they all are. They are horrible. Some of them, uh, I don't know if there is any visible. The bottoms are popping out. I'm not sure where. Oh yeah, there's one right here. You can clearly see all the rubber is coming out of there. Anyway, there's a lot of them. And my local hardware didn't have any of the specific they, they had the basic ones like 220 microfarad 16 volts but they didn't have any 1000 microfarad 6.3 volts so i had to order online express shipping so they should be here by tomorrow uh in the meantime this board is going to go through the 
I've removed the heat sink as you can see where is it there's a heat sink for it uh, this is going to go through ultrasonic cleaning because there's a lot of dirt still on board and in the ports and everywhere else so that's going to get cleaned I've removed uh, the piezo element uh, along with the caps where it is there it is right here the reason being if it's going in ultrasonic it's using pretty much same things a lot larger to uh, create the vibration and the frequency and if that's in there that's going to act as a generator and it's going to generate voltages and push them back in the circuit which I don't want so I always remove the piece elements uh, from the circuitry if I'm putting it in ultrasound uh, ultrasonic um, cleaning bath what else I've removed uh, obviously all the caps I'll clean uh, I still haven't sucked out all the holes so I'll do that before I do put it in the clean I've removed the bios as well bios is sitting right here just in case I do have a spare one somewhere so everything that I could remove I've removed all the jumpers as well I've noted where they're supposed to go so the board is literally oh I've missed one cap right here I'll remove that as well uh, then uh, yeah that's going to go into cleaning what else let's uh, well put this aside let's have a look at the card reader which is very interesting it's got positions as you know there's uh, three tracks on a normal card so if I grab my test card right here it's got magnetic strip with us three tracks but it's actually got a lot more tracks and uh, if we have a look if we take the head out you can see clearly three heads oh, let me get the right angle there and comparing to the card strip you can see that you could fit a lot more so if we do it this way it will fit six probably seven tracks it looks yeah around seven tracks that it can fit on there maybe six and there is multiple holes here for the positioning so you can actually shift this so I can put it here which is uh, it's not its original positions that's all the way to the first and I can lift it up and move it a bit further for the second position where it's originally mounted and lift it up and I can move it even further and that's how you can readjust where the tracks are written so uh, I will put it back into the original position which is in the center uh, there's nothing special here about this card reader it's a typical uh, keyboard type card reader and um, it's got an LED red green LED with a head which is in a good condition I think no one's actually been using that card reader then we'll have a look also at the fingerprint scanner which needs to be extremely cleaned so I've already removed all the screws and we've got a main board so if we remove this we will find a uh, CMOS sensor just like a video camera I'll zoom in for you so you can see it up close so it's literally a CCTV sensor here we've got a few diodes which uh, look like looks like they're different color the the side ones are one color but the center different color possibly infrared and uh, that's it on this side then we'll flip it over and we will see that there's a control chip another LED I believe this LED would be the indicator whether it's scanned or not and two more LEDs on the side which is I believe illumination again I haven't powered it up and it's a USB scanner so the principle of this how it works it's got this optical uh, well it's got the black cover and the sensor is facing that black window right here let me grab something so that's the black window surrounding the sensor so if we remove this we see a mirror there so this is the mirror pointing that direction and here we got this prism which I can, I'll get it out here so a little tunnel lens there so mirror there's a little lens in here you can see it in the mirror just see it right there excuse the focus camera has been playing up there so that's just illumination it's blue here is the prism itself and how it works uh, there is a window just to display if it's scanned or not when you're putting a finger in and I'll show you there if we look directly so that's where your pad is if we look here and I'll put my finger in you can just see my fingerprint there as I'm pushing it and that's how it's getting the image of the fingerprint you can see it right there you can see it very clear this is an um, 
plastic, but it does have this rubbery silicon gel over the top, which I'll have to clean before I reassemble this together. So that's how the fingerprint works. Let me uh, clear all this up and reassemble the side panel with a scanner and fingerprint reader and clean it all off. And then we will move on. I will open the printer, the, uh, the receipt printer, and we'll refurb that. And then I will resolder the capacitors. I'm in the process of cleaning all the plastics and there is a nasty residue left from a sticker here. It's sort of sticky still. The best thing that I use to remove it is called Zoff. Now they're not sponsors, it's a universal adhesive remover. Uh, so this is for body, it's a hospital grade adhesive remover for the stickers and that stuff works really great for the stickers. So usually just damp a little bit on the paper towel. It's got kind of um, almost like a benzene type liquid. Yeah, it feels funny, but it removes the sticker residue so good. So you can see there was a residue. Well, it's gone now. That's it. Is that it? Is it more left? Can't see, but I believe that should be about it. Clean that all off. Uh, I can't see any residue, so just to make sure, I'm going to use a little bit of Windex to remove this um, kind of a glossy film. It actually makes the plastic glossy, almost like new. So we'll clean this off off here and dry it up a bit. The dry paper towel. And there we go. It's completely gone. So Zoff is really good and now I'm going to wash it. But yeah, if you're looking for some good adhesive remover, it's uh, Zoff Universal Adhesive Remover. Let's check out the printer now. And uh, that's the printing module itself. So we've got the main board with a COM port and a power coming in. We've got one a big ribbon cable here, which is the printing head, and it looks like there's a couple of wires branching out to the side, which would be the uh, sensor that I can see, I think, just down there. Maybe we'll pull it apart and have a look. And uh, the motor, there's two motors. So one of them is driving uh, one set of gears on one side and one on the other. And uh, the receipt's going past here, past the thermal head, and it gets printed. The other side is the one that engages the roller. And let's have a look at it. So there it is. This side is just pulling the paper through. That's one set of gears. And the second set of gears is for the cutter. So it simply just pushes out the blade and then it snaps back. And the cutter, that's the blade itself that you're looking at is cutting against this little thing right here which is the second part of the blade it's just rusty so it's hard to see that top one right here so i'm going to pull it apart and we'll have a look inside uh, it looks like there may be a couple of more sensors and a button maybe oh that's the sensor right here that would be for the lead open it's hard to see it's right there it's the optical interrupt sensor and the second one I think is here when the paper is low. So let's open it up and I'll have to clean it anyway. So I'll open it up and I'll resume the video. Here is the motor in pieces literally. So we've got um, our main board right here. Uh, the base plate. We've got the blade that is still in the spring. I'll have to take it out and clean it. We've got two motors. Uh, the side of the, the chassis of the mechanism which is identical on both sides with identical motors that just mirrored. Uh, we've got all the support that's a spring for the print head. We've got the flex cable for the print head. We've got opto sensor right here. That's to sense if the lid's closed. The other one is to sense, well actually one of them is, I'm not sure why, they two buttons both pointing to the lid. So there's a button right here and we've got opto sensor to sense if it's out of paper. And here's our print head. Uh, which is just a tiny, you can, maybe you can see the line, black line right here. And those what appears to be um, golden pyramid looking zigzag shape. That's all the contacts going to the head. 
that's actually the wires. So that's it. I'm going to clean it all, use alcohol to clean that, and then uh, put some oil to lubricate the mechanisms and clean it all off and reassemble that. And I'll show you what it looks like reassembled. Here is the printer assembly. It's not closed because I haven't installed the button yet. Uh, here is the button for it. Uh, the reason is, actually, I don't know why, but specifically that part was breaking like there is no tomorrow. You touch something and it snaps off without even any force. So there is a side of the button that snapped off and I had to glue it back in, as you can see. Uh, the, this thing at the top has just fallen off randomly. I don't know why, so I had to glue it in as well. The leg of that just fallen off as well. Uh, what else? The other reason, the button where it sits down there, there's a spring between the button and that where the spring pushes to, that just fell off as well when I pushed the button in, uh, so I had to re-glue it. But anyway, that's the print assembly, and uh, oh, uh, it's just open, I haven't clicked it in. It latches when I push it, which I will show you in a second. So we've got the blades and the uh, roller that pushes the paper through on this side which engages with the mechanism on the other side and the stationary blade. And we've got the print head right there. So that's it, you put the paper in and you click it in and that's it, that's locked in place now. So this is the print assembly. Now let's get to the screen. I wanna check out the screen next and see if I should upgrade it to the LED backlight instead of the old CCFL. Moving on to the LCD module, I've decided to change the CCFLs inside it to a LED ones. And with this screen, it actually, I've put a protective cover, by the way, so it doesn't, uh, well, it's not a cover, it's a paper towel, so it doesn't scratch the screen. It looks like they've removed it very easily here. Most LCDs, you'd have to pop the whole metal off, sometimes take the panel off to get to the backlight. However, with this one, all you have to do is just undo the wire here, and then there's a little latch that you pull down and then you pull upwards and the whole CCFL tube comes right out. There it is. So that's one and the second one's at the top here. So again, just unlatch that wire and that little latch right here. See if I can capture it properly there. So you pull that outwards and then you pull the whole CCFL out. So there's our two tubes. So that's it for the LCD for now. Let's have a look at the replacement. So this is the original driver right here. That's the touch screen and that's the CCFL driver. It's only got three wires going to it, which is um, plus 12 volts ground and enable. And of course, it's got two outputs for the tubes themselves. We will be replacing that with another. You can buy easily on eBay or AliExpress Express replacement, uh, well, retrofit uh, devices to convert your CCFLs into the LED. And that's exactly what we'll be doing. They, they look all right. They're not in a bad shape. But considering how bad the caps were inside, they would have a lot of life in them. So I got those. And that's what the LED replacements are. Fortunately, they exactly the same width as, as the channel right here. So in fact, I can just put it over the top of the tube, as you can see. But we don't want to do that. Uh, I'll remove the CCFL from there. Uh, they are long. They can go up to like 22 and a half inch or something, 24 inch. And they usually would have cut marks around here. This one's been cut, uh, so it is a bit shorter. And uh, I'm going to cut it to the size. You can cut them every three LEDs. You can just see the marks, the dots there. Um, probably can't see. Oh, you can just see the dot here and here. So there's the dots where you can cut them. And I've already pre-marked this one. So I'm going to be cutting right here between the two dots. And um, that will be the screen. And that plugs into the LED driver board, which keeps running away from me. There it is. So it's got an inductor and the driver and it's 12 volts. It's got four wires and the difference is you got plus uh, 12, well, it's anywhere from um, 10 to 30 volts input. Black is ground and those two, one is enable and one is dim. So it's a dimmer. We will not be using the dimmer at all. So I'll have to modify the cable. In fact, I think 
I may have to... I'm not sure of the interchangeable. I might... Oh, it's Molex, but... Um, the Molex pitch on the panel itself... Well, not on the driver here is a lot smaller. Oh, no, it's actually... No, it's the same size. It's just one pin shorter. So I'll be able to just um, unclip those pins, pull the wires out, unclip it here, pull the wires out, and plug them in. So that should be an easy swap, no crimping or soldering required. And then just screw it in, it is a bit shorter. There's only one screw hole, but that should be good if I put double-sided tape here and I'll just stick it there. So around, around here. And yeah, just stick it on the other side. So that would be a retrofitting, and then we'll plug it in. Before I change that connector, I'll just power it externally and we'll see if they will illuminate the screen evenly. So I'm going to remove the CCFLs from there and uh, cut those and fit them in. I don't think the rubbery stuff... I'll probably leave this rubber... I don't know. I'll have to figure out to make sure that they're sitting there evenly. Probably double-sided tape will do the trick. So I'll figure that out and I will be back when I change those. I have fitted the LED strips inside the metal casings using a double-sided tape like this one. You know, the gel type. In three places, I didn't run it all the way, I just did the middle, the ends, and that's stuck there very well. So the LED lights are in, and I've plugged them in into the board using three wires. So I've got the positive uh, 12 volts, enable and ground. Enable is hooked up through a resistor to a 12 volts, just for testing. So I've got a battery here hooked up to 12 volts, and let's power it on. So now 12 volts is applied to it let's touch the resistor to 12 volts and here we go Ooh, very bright the wire fell off so they're working just fine and ready to be fitted so i'm going to fit that in and the plan is i'm going to remove the old board out of it and we're going to power those ccfls and see how bright they are and if they have any life left in them so let me fit that in first i have fitted the lights in the screen and I've hooked them up temporarily to the driver since it's normally white screen when there's no power applied to the panel. So let's power it on and see if it looks good. So I've got the wire here and here we go. Yeah, that looks perfect. Uh, now the you can see on camera a bit of a lights here but they're not actually visible to a naked eye at all. So, that's the only thing. I'm sure it's just the angle of the... Yeah, you can see them on top now too, so it's just the angle. But yeah, that's working, and it's absolutely white, so there is no problem with the panel. So that's it for that. Now, uh, that's how I fitted the wires in. So I used... Oh my god, everything's getting stuck to the sticky tape. I used the existing loops for the wires here, so I've looped the wire around there and it's it's there solid. So the panel is there for good. So this is it. Now I've just got to fit this and take the old driver out and we'll power off power on those um, CCFLs. I have pulled out the driver and uh, we're about to test it. So here is the ready screen. Well, the back of it. So I've fitted the new uh, driver right here and the wires just zip tied nicely going to the side of the screen here. All the wiring is connected, so that should be good. Now let's check out this old CCFLs and see how bright they are. I've uh, hooked up partially the system. So we've got our positive uh, batteries on, negative, and let's turn them on. Here we go. Oh. That is very dull. It is. It looks a lot brighter, and it just switched off. It looks a lot. It looked a lot brighter on that. Okay, let's try. They just switch off. So I think they may be dead, or oh, the ballast is dead for sure. Yeah, that would have been pretty much no light on the screen at all. In fact, it would be... I'll show you an example. Um, 
So this what we have the screen to right now, the other one, the same brightness, and the other ones would have been probably something like this, where you can just barely see it. Maybe a bit brighter, maybe maybe like that. But yeah, very dull. So that's gonna go in a bin. Uh, the screen's completed, I'm gonna reassemble the top assembly with the screen and read and everything else, and then we'll get back to the main board and we'll install new battery. I've already got the new battery ready, uh, with the BIOS, the memory, and we'll boot it up, see if it turns on, if the driver's still alive. The new caps have arrived, so let's chuck them in. The board is now recapped and ready for BIOS and RAM. So let's check the RAM in. Somehow there's a sticky tape on top of it. So RAM's going in. Other way around. The BIOS is going in as well. Let's see which way. And that way. And new clock battery is going in as well, and we're ready to test it. Now, where is the battery? There it is. Okay, I'm going to try to get the battery out of this human-proof packaging and uh, put it in enclosure, assemble it, and then we'll turn it on and see if it'll power up. I've reassembled the POS and uh, found the power supply that would suit it. Had to redo the cable and a plug. Uh, this is, um, I believe... What is it? 15 amps, so that should definitely cover it. And specifically that we replace the LCD backlights with um, LED. So let me grab the power cord. Here we go, first plug in. So I know power supply works for sure. And uh, let's power, press the power button. Oh, it's already orange. Let's press it. That's been green. Let's see if there's something on the screen. Oh, there we go. So far, so good. Well, I don't have keyboard. Let me just grab the keyboard. Okay, the keyboard's plugged in. Let's press F1. It is loading by the look of it. Yep, Windows XP uh, embedded, POS ready. Well, that definitely took about a minute or so. Let's see if the fingerprint scanner works. Configuration error. Oh, maybe it's just installing the software. I know you can't see it's overexposed. Um, let me see if I can maybe turn the lights towards it. It looks fine to me, but it's overexposed and the camera just says installing new hardware. Well, the fingerprint scanner works. When I put my finger on it, it starts scanning. Uh, I don't think I have written anything on that test card, but we'll give it a try anyway. Oh, it is reading it. So that works as well. Now, let's see. Let's try printing something. So we go to printers and faxes. And print... Um, Let's go to properties, print test page. Okay, 
so it works. The cutter works, it prints well. I'm not sure why it's printing only half of it. Well, it's not, it must be configuration because it did print the whole Windows logo, so... Alright, we know the printer works. What is that? Kiosk. Um, kiosk is not opening, so... We know print is good. I do not know how to use the fingerprint scan, obviously it works. Uh, and it reads the fingerprints, I just don't know how to set it. Let's try one more thing, I want to go to search and we'll see if... Um, let's go for this, this... Oh. Let's see if a card reader, if there's anything on that card. Okay, so it works. That's a test card. I'm gonna search for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. Yeah, I don't want to join. All right, so we have fixed it. Uh, the only th question is now the firmware or software for it, but we know that the teal works. So that's it. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Um, I also have Patreon if you'd like to support me there and see more projects like this on Patreon. Uh, also got some schematics and files there that you may be interested in. Uh, my name is Max, I will see you next time. Bye.